So I want to first say thank you for joining me today, Hasbian. Others may join us. If they do, they will be welcome as well. But today is going to be a learning lesson for me. I'm Dr. Priscilla. I am the CEO and founder of Speak Excellent English. This is a recorded video. So those of you who will watch, you may learn about other cultures, whatever it is that we decide that we're going to talk about today and maybe even learn a little more about the United States. So Haas, thank you so much for joining me today. Please tell You're me. You're welcome. It's yeah. always a pleasure. Thanks. Please introduce yourself and then we will begin. Okay, hey everyone, it's uh, Hossein. I'm 27 years old and I'm a nutrition and agri-food engineer uh, and I'm Algerian. Okay, fantastic. So I'm interested in knowing a little about Algeria. What are some things that you like to do in Algeria? Or if I were to come to your country, what would I enjoy doing? Okay. Well, if you come to Algeria, there are a lot of things that you are going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Food, for example, traditional food. Um, uh, you will have a lot of beautiful uh, places to visit nature um mountains as well so algeria uh, as you know is situated in the north of africa and it was the biggest country in africa be before the uh, sudan was split into the northern and the southern one so mm -hmm. that's all you've got a lot of things to, to to visit and to discover here in algeria you'll be surprised Okay, so is Algeria a place where many tourists travel to? Sorry? Do many tourists travel to Algeria in huge yes. proportions? Okay. Yes. Is it considered an expensive place to tour or relatively moderate? Is no, it it's, not, it's not very expensive. It's mm -hmm. cheap if you compare it to the European or American countries. Ah. And what about places to stay? Are the accommodations equal to what we might find in Europe or America? Or the places, do you, what is, a, what is the major hotel, name of a major hotel in Algeria? Like the Hilton, the Marriott? Do you uh, have we, a, we have the Marriott here in Algeria. Oh, okay, okay. Awesome. In the east and the, in the west too. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Okay. And, you know, as an American, I love, 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 love fast food. Are, mm -hmm. we, able, are we able to find our fast food, like Kentucky Fried Chicken, Burger King, McDonald's? What can we find? Um, you will find the um, fast food, of course, and you will find uh, restaurants that are specialized in traditional foods, too. You, mm -hmm. you will enjoy it. I can okay. assure you that you will like it. So what is a major dish that... If I were to come that you would say, you must try this dish. What dish would you recommend that I try? Okay. If you come to the, um, to the Eastern uh, parts of Algeria, you will have to try and to the, uh, to the, uh, oh, wait. wait, there was a connection cut. So if I were to come to Algeria, what food would I find that I would really enjoy? Okay. If you, you visit Algeria for the first time, you will have to try couscous. Okay. Couscous, which is a very famous dish in the eastern and in the middle of Algeria. Mm. It's very known. Mm -hmm. And each, each one of these parts prepares it in a different way. Okay, so, is so it a, we have we have like hundreds of recipes for couscous only. Oh, hundreds of recipes. Okay, so in this in the basic recipe of couscous, is it chicken? Is it pork? Is it uh, duck? What is couscous, or is it just a vegetable? No, uh, couscous is a um, a traditional homemade pasta, uh, grains uh -huh. grains homemade grains. Um, that are steamed and um, uh, served at the end with um, 
kind of sauce that is prepared with chicken and sometimes with lamb. Mm. Mm -hmm. And vegetables also. And what do we eat this with? Do we eat it as a soup? Or is it a fork and spoon and knife dish? How would I eat that? Kush kush. Um, we, uh, we usually use a spoon to eat kush kush. Okay, is it a soup? Is it in a bowl or in a round plate? Well, in a round plate, in a very big round plate. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that plate is called gasa here in Algeria. Okay. What would I drink with that? Would I drink water, beer? Okay. People um, here in Algeria usually drink uh, albin, albin, which is a coagulated milk. Mm. Mm -hmm. is it it, warm? It's a dairy, is it a dairy warm? product. Is it warm milk or just regular milk? Do you drink it from the refrigerator or do you warm it up? Do no, you drink it, we drink it cold. Ah, okay. With ice or no? No, without ice. Without so ice. you will like the combination between the, the couscous that is hot and with the the, the bin that is cold. Mm -hmm. Can you spell this word bin? I'm not sure what it is. Such a... Okay, it's L B E N L bin. L bin. L B E N. L bin. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah, interesting. You All can right. just say milk. Or just milk. So, mm -hmm. you, do you have goat milk maybe? Or cow milk? Which is it? Or both? Um, oh, uh, we drink both. Okay. Cow yeah. and goat milk. Uh-huh. Okay. And in the, yeah. southern, in the southern part of Algeria, they drink camel's milk as well. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. It, what do you think? Is camel milk good or? Uh, well, I've already tried both uh, camel milk and camel uh, flesh, camel okay. meat. Okay. And I didn't, I didn't really appreciate that. Oh, I didn't know you ate camel meat. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. So I, I was in Dubai maybe six months ago and I went to this camel farm. I didn't mm -hmm. know about eating it the eating the animal, but I did ride the camel. It was so much fun. It was oh, really? <laughs> scary sitting up high. It was scary, but it was fun. I really, I really did enjoy doing that. Okay. In terms of transportation, how many American okay. cars do you find over in Algeria? Can you repeat the question, please? In Algeria, how many uh -huh. American cars do you normally see? American cars in Algeria. Um, you mean brands, American brands? Yeah, like a Chevrolet. Or... Um, not a not not a lot of them. <laughs> That's what not I, really. So, what is the most popular one? Toyota, or um, the the French Peugeot. brand Peugeot. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. And what type car do you drive? Well, it's, it's a Peugeot as well. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, L7. Okay. I don't know that much about cars. What about motorcycles? Are Algerians very big on riding motorcycles or no? Um, not really. Not a lot of motorcycles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lots of cars instead. Okay. Now, I don't know that you have been to the US, but perhaps you've seen movies. So this is one of the questions I really am interested in knowing about driving. What side of the road do Algerians drive on? And do you have the traffic lights, what we have, that are sometimes mostly in the middle of the highway from a, from a pole, or do the traffic lights sit on a pole in Algeria. The ones on the pole are a little confusing to me because I don't know where to look. But where, mm -hmm. where are the traffic signals? And well, there's, they, are all, they are all the time placed in the, in the, in the, in the edge of the road. <laughs> yeah, which is a little like confusing. And the, which side of, road, mm -hmm. side of the road 
what I expect you to drive. Do you drive on the right uh, side or the left side of the road? Beg your pardon? Which side of the road do you drive your car? On the right side? Mm -hmm. or on the right side. Okay. And mm -hmm. do you have pedestrians have the right of way or no? Um, yes. Okay. Yes, we do. Yeah, we have pedestrians, but the pedestrians I should... I still remember the word, pedestrians. Yeah, and the pedestrians should walk in the crosswalk, like the zebra-shaped... Mm -hmm. Of course, we have, this, we have the same. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, great. Well, I know a little about Algeria today, and now mm -hmm. I'll try to retain that information. The next time we have a different class, I'll refer to some of the things that I've learned from you today about Algeria. Would you like to ask me some questions about the US? And then we'll go into a different type of lesson as well. Okay. Well, I've got an information that I want you to, to confirm or to deny. Okay, I'll try. Well, <laughs> people say that there is, there, is, there is a gift that you don't have the right to offer to an American citizen who first met meet him. There is a gift that you, there is a kind of flowers that you don't have the right to offer to an American when you first meet him. Oh carnivals. <laughs> is that true? I don't I've never heard that. I've oh never, really? I've never heard that. <laughs> I've never heard uh -huh. that. Uh, one of the things that I would say that my son does if he meets mm -hmm. a girl that he likes, and the very first time that he meets her mother, he goes to meet her mother, he brings the mother flowers. But it doesn't have to be a particular type of flower, but I don't okay. know if there's any rule that you can't give a specific flower. I've never heard that. And so sometimes there are stereotypes that might be specific to a particular area uh, like there are 50 states so okay. there may be there may be things that some states don't typically do in the south where i am from north carolina is my hometown but i'm living in alabama right now due to the coronavirus but mm -hmm. even in alabama i have not heard of that so a lot of things, just keep in mind that you hear, especially about the US, is stereotypes. A lot of things that you hear is stereotypes. And when I say stereotypes, it's just a quick way of saying something, but it's not transcendent to the majority of the population. Okay. Um, so a good example would be, uh, we all like fried chicken. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do love fried chicken. I don't love it too. But it doesn't mean, that, you know, you can't find some people that don't like ch fried chicken. Or you might hear that people of color love watermelon. Like we eat watermelon all the time. That's not true. Mm -hmm. I like okay. watermelon, but I don't eat it all the time because it's mm -hmm. a little messy for me. It's 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 very difficult to cut it's difficult to clean up after so i don't like to do it. Uh, a stereotype it might be that probably all americans eat barbecue okay so let's see someone is joining us now okay i've got another question for you yeah okay well well what's something that uh i will find in these streets something to eat that i will for sure, finding this church. Okay. When I first visit the United States. Okay. What is it? Most uh, likely. It's a, uh -huh. No, it's a. Most likely, it's hot dogs. What is it? Okay, it's a question for you. Oh, I would probably say most likely it would be hot dogs. Oh. Okay. Uh, hot dogs, and they're quick, easy to handle, and serve. Personally. I don't like eating off the streets anywhere in America, in other countries, because of the sanitary conditions. First, I want to 
where do you wash your hands after you've scratched your head, scratched your arm? Where do you wash your hands? And then you're going to give me something to eat. <laughs> disgusting. Just disgusting. So, Abdul Hamid, thank you for joining us, albeit, albeit late. <laughs> but thank you. How are you today? Hello. How are you hey. today? I'm good. What about you? I'm fantastic. Fine, thank you. Are you able to turn your video on? So I was learning about uh, my internet. Can okay, I... that's that's fine. That's fine. I was learning. About, I was learning about Algeria today. Is there anything that you'd like to add? Please, can you repeat what you said? I said that I was learning about Algeria today. Is there anything that you'd like to add? I guess you've been learning about Algeria. Yes, I was learning about Algeria today. Where are you from? Where I'm from are you? Algeria? What did you learn? Well, no, I've I been don't telling want, I've been telling want. her information about Algeria, <laughs> about famous dishes here in Algeria, things that we like to eat, and things that she will have to try when she when she visit visit Algeria. Can you say more, Abdul Hamid? Do you wish to tell me more? I hope so. I hope she can. Well, Dr. Priscilla, well, we have, I we wish have you good could. We have, we have good nature here. OK. Um, the weather is good. Mm -hmm. the, we the weather is, is more beautiful than the weather in the United States. Uh, I beg to differ. There's no, places, there's no place as beautiful as the U.S. No place on earth. No place. That's what you say, doctor. <laughs> and, it's, and especially in my home state of North Carolina. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful in North Carolina. The mountains are beautiful. The best time to come to North Carolina is in the fall, in September and October, when the mountains are so gloriously adorned with the red, brown, orange hues of leaves. But, it looks but, like but you, you haven't, you haven't visited Gijal yet. No. When you, when you, when you saw Gijal, you won't talk about this <laughs> California thing again. Well, I, I uh, wish you could attend one of our wedding parties, Dr. Uh, Priscilla. Uh, you will be astonished. I can assure you that you will be surprised. Okay, why so? Why? You've got a lot of customs, beautiful customs, mm -hmm. wedding customs, especially. Oh, really? More, so more than just the bride and the bridesmaids dress up? Yes, of course. Ah, okay. The, bri the, the bride here in Algeria can wear five customs, five customs in, in her me? Oh, really? Her wedding. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ah. So more than five sometimes. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Can you tell her about uh, the names of the customs? The names of the customs? I think I didn't get you. Yeah, he said that there are names to the costumes. Like Captain, uh, for example. Okay, I, I I'm not very, I'm not very into names, but <laughs> I can describe them at least. <laughs> Right. Each, one, each one of the customs has a particular shape, a uh -huh. different color, mm -hmm. um, and each one uh, symbolizes a certain region here in Algeria. I see, I see. Mm. So are the, are the marriages arranged in Algeria, or do the husband and wife choose themselves? Are they arranged marriages in Algeria? It's, it's arranged sometimes, and... And sometimes they give the um, they give the freedom, let's say freedom to the to the groom and the bride to choose each other. Which do you prefer, Abdul Hamid? Arranged or you choose? Uh, I'd prefer I I choose. 
-hmm. <laughs> okay, and husband? Which of do you course, like? of course, I like to, to choose my, my future <laughs> bride. <laughs> and of course, you know, in the US, we want to choose, we want to choose one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just joking, but anyway, it's interesting. It's okay. interesting. All right, so so much for that. We had an opportunity to practice talking, and I did. I made myself some notes, and in the next class, hopefully, I can refer to my notes and say something to instill into the session that I'm learning more about different cultures and things of that nature. Uh, apart from asking me about things in the U.S., and you can. What else would you like me to talk about? And I'd like for you to try to remember to use at least one thing that you've learned in other mm -hmm. classes, because mm -hmm. that's how you're going to build your fluency. Make sure that you're okay. using something that you have learned in the past. I don't necessarily have to keep up with what you've learned. That is something that I want you to take responsibility for yourself and make sure that you're repeating something that you've learned and I know that although I won't cook couscous tonight, I am going to learn more about that because you I was perfectly pronouncing it. I did pronounce it correctly. Mm -hmm. okay. Perfect. That was perfect. Okay. Super, super, super. All right. So continue to talk. I want you to talk. And if you want, I can give us something to read and then to talk about it. In okay. Brief. What's Mrs. Priscilla? Yes. What's a pushback? Okay. For someone that wants to settle down in the U.S. Okay. The pushback, according to our president right now, the pushback would be, we have too many people coming to our country and they're not being productive. They're not providing something of huge value. So that would be a pushback. You're trying mm -hmm. to come, we're saying no. But the thing of it is, is this. Um, I know someone else is, I think, trying to come. One person is, oh, that's Abdul Hamid coming in again. That in our country, as it is right now, mm -hmm. we are accustomed to providing a service. We're not really laborers here in America, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, manufacturing not manufacturing mm -hmm. but building things maybe it's more mexicans and hispanics or some people like that that are trying to come in but if they don't come in i off i wonder who is going to be building stuff when mm -hmm. i call someone to fix something in my house it's usually probably not a an american that comes to fix it mm -hmm. So that's the pushback. Uh, there's pushback for the universities here in the U.S. For us to be the, one of the most industrialized nations, why do I have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for my education? I mean, I have eighty thousand dollars that I owe. That I owe. I owed initially about one hundred and seventy thousand. Mm -hmm. But now I owe 80000 Why is it so expensive to go to school here? Why is it so expensive to go to the hospital here? I know the answer because we are a capitalistic society. You know, it is about the money. Everyone wants to. Um, so, so this, the coronavirus is having a huge impact on the Americans. Okay. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's something? What's something that I have to have my head upon it when I decide to visit the USA? Okay. What is something that you have to have your head upon it? Well, I can see the word upon, but I don't necessarily upon it. Is it upon it? Yeah, but I don't think that you. I, what is something that you need to be up on? What is something that you need to be up on once you come to the United States? Mm. What does that mean? Well, the way that I'm saying it, something that you need to be up on is something that you need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Something that you need to be aware of. Um, if you are, this is a stereotype. If you don't look the norm, 
if you don't if in a particular group, if you don't look the norm, people are going to perhaps make assumptions about you. And those assumptions may not be correct. And they sometimes they may not be good. So a lot of Americans wear their hat backwards like you have on. Okay. <laughs> But mm -hmm. I would be a little hesitant to approach you. It's kind of gangsta, you know? Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> but I don't think that you are a gangsta. But I don't know. Maybe you are. And maybe no, he is. Not. <laughs> maybe, maybe he is. So one of the things that you need to be up on is that when you're using slang, don't use slang unless someone else is using slang because I might use some slang that would be um, talking down to someone else. But it that might be touching for someone else. Exactly. So you want to be up on slang and rather than be up on it, just don't use it unless you hear. And then even if you hear someone else use it, if they don't look like you, you might not need to say it either. <laughs> because there, again, people of color can say things in a different audience, I mean, in an audience that look like me. But if I say it, if you say it like, hey, what's wrong with you? Why are you saying that? Um, things that you should be up on. We generally tip when we go to a nicer restaurant. If you're having a plate and a cloth napkin, you mm -hmm. tip um at the restaurant if you go to a fast food restaurant you don't and sometimes you can have a paper napkin you might tip but most of the time if you have a cloth napkin you tip okay mm -hmm. okay there's something else yeah they say that something that the interviewer pay attention to when you go to an interview is the watch that you put in your hand is that true? The watch? Yes. Like the watch? Yes, in the USA especially? I wasn't aware. No, I've never, I wasn't aware of that. I don't even wear a watch, so <laughs> no. If you go to an interview, you should not look at your watch. You should not look at your watch like, oh my gosh, how much longer is this interview going to take? You know, you probably will spend 30 to 45 minutes, but don't look at your watch like, oh, you're not done yet, that sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say to be prepared uh, in an interview, come with a few questions of your own. Questions might uh, be one question. Did someone have this position prior to my interviewing forward? And if the answer is yes, why did that person leave? would be a good question to ask because they may have left because they couldn't stand working for the boss. I know they won't say that, but just try to find out why the other person left. Do your research, do research about the company, Google it. Why did you, they'll ask, why did you apply for this position? You don't want to say, well, I found it on the internet and you had a vacancy. Uh, I just I applied for this position because it met with the skill sets that I currently have. For example, I am a blah 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 blah. But you would need to practice some uh, interview questions. Okay. All right, so let's just change it a little bit. What are your thoughts about having this? Um, Real Talk Saturdays. I'm thinking I'll do that for maybe a month, which would be four Saturdays. Four Saturdays. Uh, what do you think? Do you think it's a good idea, or should I? Do you think I should have a planned session? Just no. I I think you should schedule it. You should make it every Saturday. I do. Re I do enjoy the idea. Okay, but I'm talking about should it be a lesson or should it just be we didn't have anything planned today? Um, it's I think it's better that we have a a session. 
<laughs> okay. All he right. doesn't want to talk. Okay. Well, the the goal is the goal is to talk. The goal is to talk, not just to come and listen, which some people will come to do and listen. All right. Well, I set this one for forty five minutes. We still have a few minutes remaining. I can take a look. Let's take a look at. Let's look at this lesson that I had that you saw, and it was panda. There is someone else here, but oh, Abraham is here. Hey, Abraham. Abraham is my friend from. Hey, Abraham. Hello. Hello, hello, Virginia. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Abraham is my. Can you hear me? Abraham is my dear friend from Saudi Arabia. We've been friends for about 15 years or so. I love, I love Abraham just like he's my. Thank you. Me too. Me too. Friend. Uh, so Abraham, say hello to Haas and to Abdul Hamid. They are both. They are both from Algeria. Yes. Welcome, Mr. Abdul Hamid. And what the other guy, ha Hassan? Yeah. Hussein. That's Hussein. Hussein. You can call me Hass. He said, yep. <laughs> said Hass, your name Hussein, the Arabian. Welcome, Mr. Hassan and Abdul Hamid. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Brad. What's Brothers going on? Man. How's it go? How's coronavirus with you? <laughs> oh, it's, it's invading us. <laughs> <getting viral. laughs> yeah. We are in quarantine now. We are in quarantine like a jail in Jeddah. Muckles. We are in a quarantine too here in Algeria. Mm. Yeah, but I don't think so. I don't think so. Like Makkah and Jeddah, Makkah is very worse. Twenty-four hours. And Mecca, how many, Mecca has how many, so many people? I think is it Mecca? Mecca one. A huge city. Very, very Arabia. Mac, yeah, as you know, Makkah is the holiest city, the biggest city in the Arabian Peninsula, mm -hmm. and it's a holy place for Muslims. Mm. And Jeddah, Jeddah is very close city, but now Jeddah and Makkah one city. They attached together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because too many population there, too many people there. And mm. uh, yeah, especially when they make the Umrah or the pilgrimage uh, come anytime, they open. Mm -hmm. And the crowded it's place. It's being cancelled yeah. for this year. I wish I wish me and uh, Hussein can come to Mecca one day. Don't you agree, Hussein? Okay, hope so. Inshallah, Inshallah, you will be the Muslim. They must visit that place once in their life. And I know all Muslims wishing to reach that goal. And uh, by the way, uh, what is your job, Abdul? Who was talking, Abdul Hamid or Hassan? No, it's Hassan who is speaking. Hassan, okay, Hassan, what is your job, Hassan? Okay, I, I work in a factory uh, for for products without gluten. Oh, really? Production of what? Can you repeat that? Could you repeat products that? for products without gluten for food without gluten. And we would say glu oh, gluten. All right. I would say I gluten. See. Gluten oh. is that gluten? Yeah, well, that's what we would say, gluten. Gluten, okay. Uh -huh. What about uh, you, Ibrahim? Me, I, I am, I am a retired engineer. Uh, I'm looking for a job now. Can you repeat? And thanks for the she helped me a lot. And I found a job, another job after retirement. And now I quit the last three months. And Abraham is in, my in the U.S. Because I, 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 my English, I study hard to make it more. And uh, in my language, in French language, in the sky, uh, for about 10 years or 9 years, we're pursuing another group, which is, uh, they call me for job. I didn't look for that. Because they, they, they saw my language, English language, and plus my experience in aviation. They called me for a job. So English is very important. 
really good job, really. And for promotion, for promotion, if you want to get another job, English is very important for job seekers. Sure. <laughs> And Ibram has a has a group also on Skype. They meet. I don't know how often they meet. They meet all the time. His group meets all the time. But after whatever fourteen or so years ago, I decided that I needed to branch off because I needed to work. And uh, but I always have fond memories. Ibram was my first paying student, so, <laughs> so, I, so I will always have fond memories of Ibrahim. So thank you so much for that. So Ibram, you know you're coming in late. Uh, I don't know that I don't know that you're coming in that you knew that you're coming in late, but I sent you the message. So we only have like five, five or three or five minutes or so. And I was. What time is it in Saudi Arabia? Could you repeat that, please? What time is it in your country, Ibrahim? Uh, the time is is one. 42 a.m. in the morning. In the morning. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So it's 11 p.m. in Algeria. We are preparing ourselves to sleep. Yeah. So yeah, I have to wake up. Uh, uh, but, uh, but I'm sorry because I came late because the time different is very changed. Yeah. No, that's time. Different. GMT time used to be three hours different. But when <laughs> I checked okay. the Google, when I checked the Google, I found it one hour different. It changed. <laughs> it's okay. Time has been changed. Yeah, we are on time we are on uh daylight savings time right now. But next Saturday, uh Ibram, just for your group and for the ones that I'm inviting, I will probably have the sessions around uh, one or two PM. Central time, but I'll send out the the links again. And you don't have to come to all of them; just come to the ones that you can. All right. Um, I want you to just make a comment on the YouTube when I post the YouTube. Make a comment. This is what I'm expecting in lieu of students becoming paid students that they're going to make uh, me become more visible by that. So, so. Haas Ben had asked me what is something that someone should be on when they come to the U.S., meaning using the phrasal verb up on, and that is just being aware of uh, different areas. Uh, some places are a little more um, secure than others, so everything that you see on TV, it is, it, it is not a city, it's not a country paid with you know, good things. It's a it's the best. It's the greatest place in the world to live, the most beautiful place in the world to live. <laughs> but we have places that you need to do your research before you come, uh, if possible. Try to develop friendships so that you have someone you can call if you get to the U.S. And that's about all. But, but American slaves. But American series say the opposite. It's not that safe there in the U.S. Uh, it says that there is a, a high rate of crimes in the USA. Is that true? Yeah. But, but, that's, but you don't see that on, well, you might see it now, but typically you don't see that. We don't broadcast that. But yeah, there is a, there's a huge rate of crime. And with the, with the coronavirus, I imagine that it's going to increase as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, because a lot of people, just as in your country, they are out of work. And if you don't have work, you don't have money, you can't feed your family. So, you know. My, my bro lives there, by the way. He lives in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin? Where does your brother live? Yeah. In Wisconsin? Well, I think yeah, he lives in Wisconsin. In New York. Where did you live, Ibram, when you were here? Uh, when I was in America, I lived in three states, actually. One year in California, and uh, one year and a half in Amarillo, Texas, and finally in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. 
Okay, I, I don't know why I thought you lived in New York. I'm sure you found Oklahoma slow and dusty and dull. I don't know. And you, you, you stood there for how many years, Ibrahim? Uh, total, total around five years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, also, five years. That's we a have, very long have, time. That started, have, started from 1980 uh, and ended in 1985. Okay. Okay. Right. From 1980 to 1985. Yeah. Right. How old are you? Huh? How old are you? I'm 20 years old, but I look 60. He's retired. <laughs> He's retired. I'm 20 years old, but I look 60. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you all will share the information about our class, that it is available. It is completely free. All that anyone has to do is register. And if they are registered at some point, I'll find out who the regulars are going to be. And then we'll start looking in other places to improve and increase our numbers. Thank you so much, Abdul Hamid, for coming. And Abdul Hamid, did you see how Abdul Hamid is just coming out? When I first tried to say your name, it was like, oh, what? Oh. But in, <laughs> it's nice to have it's you. more back. fluent than the previous time. <laughs> yes, it's very fluent. Osbian, it's good to see you. Ibrahim, as always, thank you so much. Love to you guys. I don't think I'll have a class on tomorrow, but if I do, it will just be one that I just decide to have and those who can show up will show up. It won't be anything planned. I'll just send out a record. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Have a nice day. Okay, take care now. Bye.